Now, hey developers, so today we're looking at something really cool. We are looking at Tailwind Labs headless UI libraries for both React and Vue.js. So this is a different sort of library that you may not be used to. So we're gonna talk about it, what it is and how you can use it in your projects today. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric and I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of a few books. So if you guys like JavaScript, Vue.js, React, anything like that, make sure you subscribe to the channel below and you can go ahead and click that like button. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump right onto it. All right, so recently Adam Wathen, who is the creator of Tailwind and a bunch of other things, uh, created this new, uh, this new release. He said, it's still early, but we tagged the first release of headless UI for React and Vue. You're starting with just a menu button or drop down for your common folk with new components coming every few weeks. So an incredible work by Mal, uh, Robin Malfayette for this one. So a lot of people were very interested in this. They're thinking like, is this a new Tailwind component library? Is this like a, a component library using Tailwind that we can all use? And I think people got confused because that's not exactly what it is. Uh, what? So we actually had a follow-up and it's not a traditional component library that you might see like in the view world, like something like Vuetify, um, or like an angular material or a material design framework. No, this is, uh, it's not an alternative to Tailwind UI. It's not a pre-designed UI kit. You can see here, uh, Adam, Adam Wathen mentioned it. It's not styled at all. It's not tied in any way Tailwind. There's no CSS or classes or anything in kind in the library. So while Tailwind is a utility first, the CSS library, this is more just handles the behavior of the actual components, like how they actually work inside your app itself. So this would be perfect for someone that's looking to add some new features to their their uh, app, but they don't want not they don't necessarily want to have it all styled already. So at first, when I, I learned about this, I was thinking like, why wouldn't you want to have the styles included? But then when I was thinking about it a little bit more, I mean, it made sense that. This is not necessarily for everyone. I think one of the biggest problems is, is when you bring in a big a UI component library into your app, obviously you're adding a lot of bundle size. It can add, add a lot of data, but you may have some styles and stuff in there you may not like. So really what you're doing here is you're adding a component library, but you have to style it all yourself. So all the logic of opening things and closing things, you don't have to worry about. All you have to do is worry about trying to style it. And that's really important. Also, it does cover accessibility. So that's another thing you don't have to worry about. So let, let's take a look at some of the examples of how this works. First, uh, there's two packages. If you go, I'll make sure links in the descriptions. One is for headless React. I'll make this a little bigger. And one is for headless view. Since I do a lot of Vue.js on this channel, we're gonna look at the view one, but this works pretty similar for the React one as well. So you, uh, if you go here, it actually has a quick installation guide and I went ahead and installed it already. So um, keep in mind, if you wanna use this inside your Vue app, you must have Vue 3. So make sure using the latest version of Vue CLI to create your app or use something like Vite or you just make sure that you're running Vue 3. And then you can do an NPM install at headless view and that should install and I just tried it out no problems there and then what I did is just so I could have a CSS library and I really like Tailwind I installed Tailwind afterwards using uh, view add Tailwind is um, one way you can do it if you're using view CLI and that's a view UI plugin after that uh, you can you have access to their one and only component which is the menu button drop down and I'll show you how that works so really, I believe if this goes well, they're going to be developing a lot of other components. So instead of just having the menu button drop down, they're gonna do list box, toggles, modals, tabs, slide overs, mobile menus, accordion, so on and on and on. And each one of these is just gonna be the behavior of these components and not necessarily the CSS and everything behind it. So here is an example of it, and they also have a code sandbox if you wanna try through there. But out of the box, this is sort of what you get. So if you just add in, you can see here they, they expose, you can basically grab some pre-created for in, view, in the view world. These are already created components for you, this menu, menu button, menu items, and menu item. And then you kind of structure it like this. 
uh, kind of the outmost layer, you put the menu, and then you have like a menu button which is toggles the uh, menu items to display or not. And you have this uh, menu items, and each menu items has a menu item in it. And you can put uh, links in there, and you can then style these however you want it. You can also make them disabled, and we'll kind of look at some of the things you can do with this. And that that's essentially it right here. You just this is like the base example. And as I mentioned before, and I'll keep reiterating over this video, these are not styled out of the box. So don't expect to just you know throw this into your app and then be like, great, it has default styles. I I'm good. No, you're gonna have to style it yourself. And you know that's there's pros and cons in that. I kind of mentioned that a little earlier. You know, one thing as I am as I am a software developer and I'm working in production apps. Sometimes I like to just grab stuff off the shelf, throw it into my app. I don't. I understand, especially if it's an internal tool. I don't really care about bundle sizes, you know, and I don't really care too much about the styling. But other times when I'm grabbing stuff out of the uh, off the shelf and grabbing these components, I want to do a lot of customization. And sometimes when you're using something like View Bootstrap or Vuetify, it's hard to do those customizations. Yeah, you can change the default colors, but if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of changing exactly how it works and changing like all the little styles, sometimes that's more difficult, it's more difficult to overwrite that CSS. So I might choose like headless UI in that situation if that happened to me. Um, you know, just to grab something really quickly and then I can completely style it myself. Now, I'm not a really great on design, so that may not be the first option for me, but it's cool that I know that something like that's out there. And if you guys have heard of other libraries like this, like this headless no style components, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what else is out there. I've actually never played with one that is not styled at all. It's just kind of weird to me um, at first. Now I'm kind of, kind of understanding. So like here, this this example right here, this this component I created, and by the way, this is using View 3, is if I click on this, it just opens this big, ugly blue thing right here. And I did add a style to make it blue, but that's it. So like there's really nothing here to it. Uh, however, if I wanted to kind of put a little bit more effort, here is an example. I kind of stole some styles out of some of the examples that I had. And this is what a, a menu button would look styled. So you click on it here, you have a little transition, um, which we're gonna talk about. And then, so it kind of fades in and fades out after you click it. And then I have, uh, every time you highlight it or over it, mouse over it, I have just a blue out background to it. And then, you know, it's kind of styled. And then some of these are disabled, so obviously you can't click on them. And I can add other items too on this list that don't, uh, that I don't do anything. But I can also, like this would might be, I could definitely see this, like putting this in the top right hand corner and then having it be clicked every time someone's logged in or if someone wants to get some more information, they can then you know go to their account information or documentation and they can see who signed in. So that's kind of the example of this is what you get out of the box, but if you want to style it, it's easy to go in and make these styles yourself. So what can you do with this? Now, like I said, this is kind of a very early almost prototype version, but I think you, it certainly could be used in production. I don't see why not. I don't think they say you shouldn't, but it's still like in really early development and they only have this one component, but they are gonna add some more. But there is some really cool things like out of the box that it does for you. So for example, it, it can, um, you can add vSlot and that's a way you kind of like grab information out of the component and expose it to the, the parent component. So you have this active here so like in my examples here, I have this active blue. So when you're, you know, when you're mousing over it, it, it turns blue. So you can have this active class that I'm pulling out of this menu item. Um, you can also do disabled, like uh, I did down here. Um, you can disable items so they can't be clicked on. Uh, yeah, you can see here, this is a headless component, so there are no styles to by default. Instead, the components expose useful information via scope slot. So if you are brand new to view and you don't know what scope slots are, they're just, uh, kind of like I said before, they're just a way to like access data from the child component. You can kind of pull it up to a parent component. It's a common case when a component is used to render an array of items or something like that. So there, so obviously active is probably the one you would probably use the most out of it. But you can even do things like this. You can show hiding the menu. Uh, let's see here. By default, your menu items instance will be shown hidden automatically based on the internal open state tracked with the menu component itself. But if you like to um, have it control it yourself, you can do this. So 
I'm gonna go to my basic example, and in this menu, I can add this V slot, and I can do this uh, curly bracket, and this looks supposed to open, and I'm just gonna see what open looks like here, and then I can change this menu item, my menu items here to static. And if I save it like this and go back to my example, you can see it says false here. Now when I click here, I can actually see every time I click the menu button that it, it changes from true to false. So if I wanted to, and you can see here it's static, so this doesn't change at all. It's just gonna always be open. But I could put like a, I don't know, like a V show on one of these. Like in this example here, they put a V show around the, the menu items, I believe. Yeah, the menu item. So if I do something like this, and I don't know, V show equals open, and then I grab this out and I put it underneath this one here. Now I can see I am able to control that using the V show, so I can use some like inner wrapper stuff, so I can control it myself. So it does have some nice, useful things like that. Uh, let's see here. You can also, like I said, already mentioned, you can disable an item. Here's a cool thing, you can do transitions. So like right here, we have this transition component. We have interactive. So to animate opening, closing the menu panel, use views, this is a view thing, built-in transition component. All you need to do is wrap your menu items instance in the transition. So here's the menu items. Um, let me close this, hide uh, sidebar. Yeah, so you have this this uh, transition, this wraps the menu items, and then I can do all my like transitions, like duration, ease out, scales. This is all built in to the animation library inside view, which is really cool. You can even re uh, render additional content, so anything in between this menu items, you can add in additional things, like I have this div in here. It's not wrapped inside a menu item, but it's still there. Um, you can render different elements. There's this as component. So like if you look inside here, let's look at this styled one and I inspect it in the specter. I think you could see it here. Um, let's see here. Like these are all uh, classes. This is a div tag. But if you wanted to, you could uh, change the styling. So you instead of having it be um, the menu item, you can render something. So you want to render it as a div or you want to render it as something else. You can use this as option, which is pretty cool. Uh, then it also has, uh, yeah, it also has the basically as an open are the two ones that you use most often in here. You can expose this vslot open or you can change like what the item is when it renders. So I think this is a really neat uh, way to think about component libraries of this kind of headless or no style libraries that you can add in. Like I said, uh, I'm one that's not amazing at design, so I'm not sure if I would use something like this. I think I will grab it for just like quick demos and just use Tailwind with it to just try to like create things. But it's nice to know that people are creating these things like this. And this is absolutely 100% free. I know that Adam has like paid Tailwind UI packages that you can install that has, like if you were really looking for a bunch of really neat menus or things like that, then this isn't it. Um, this is just the behavior itself. But if you wanted it completely styled, he actually sells that by itself. So this is a little different. Uh, also, for those of you who made it all the way to the end, I just wanna point one other thing out. If you go to examples and you look at the source code of this and you're looking to learn uh, view with TypeScript. This whole package is written in TypeScript, which is pretty pretty awesome. And he's using hooks, and he's using Vite, and he's using uh, you know, just a lot of really cool technology. So if you kind of want to see how to create a really cool plugin and platform, I would look at how um, how he created this because it is is done pretty well. You can see he's using uh, types everywhere, and yeah, kind of a neat. A neat package. All right, so let me know what you guys think of this headless UI. Leave a comment below, I appreciate it. And if you guys wanna see more stuff by me, I also occasionally uh, do view courses, uh, view workshops. I leave a, always leave in my, in my description below a link where you can sign up to get notified next time one of those comes out. And also I let you know when I uh, have new YouTube videos. So thanks.